I'm here with unbeaten professional fighter Matisse Zaharovs. Matisse, how are you today? How are you? And I'm not too bad now myself. Glad to hear it. Thank you for coming on the show. Uh, congratulations on a uh, very impressive pro debut. You uh, won your pro debut, Bamo 35, just last month in May. Uh, how does it feel to start your pro career off with uh, you know such an impressive win and to do so uh, for Bama? Uh, feels fairly good now. I'm for, I was I'm happy with the victory. It was uh, I kind of knew I was going to win anyways because I bet him before. Mm, yeah. So yeah, it's, it was a nice way to start off the pro debut, anyways, and the pro career now. For sure, for sure. Now, why was obviously you've had a, a fairly a lengthy but very successful amateur career. Why was 2018 the year that you went pro? Um, because I pretty much bet everyone I needed to beat <laughs> in the amateurs in Ireland. Mm. So yeah, it was just pretty much it was about time I it was about time I went pro, anyways. Well, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm definitely happy you did. I'm, I'm looking forward to a, a successful pro career from you. Um, Matisse, your last several fights have been at Bantamweight, obviously, but I saw in an interview a little while back that you hoped to maybe drop down to flyweight. Uh, is that something you're so interested in? Yeah. Yeah, I, I probably will drop down to flyweight eventually now. But I probably have two more, two more in Bantamweight mm -hmm. and see how they get on. And then I'll probably drop down to flyweight. Is there a reason why you'd like to drop down? Yeah, uh, I don't really cut much. See, I don't, I don't really cut much for bantamweight, so I know I, I know I can make flyweight. So why not make it? True. And have true, that a bit more true. advantage. What is next for you? Do you have anyone on your radar? Uh, do you have like a target date of when you want to return to the cage again? Hmm. Probably in August. August. I'll have my another one in August. Yeah. Yeah, after the holiday now. Going holiday there, July 11th. Mm -hmm. So after that, I'll see, talk to my coach and see what's up then for the next fight. Is there anyone on your radar? Is there anyone that uh, maybe has your attention? Because uh, as you said, you pretty much beat everyone so far. Yeah, but everyone an amateur now. Um, I don't know. No one really at the moment. Only one I know as a pro. I still need to take out a few more guys to see who's going to be in my way for whatever promotion, whatever there, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah, no one at the moment, but people will crop up, and then we'll see what happens. Looking ahead for you, uh, what are some of your goals uh, for 2018, uh, maybe even early 2019? Uh, finish 2018 over, uh, finish, yeah, finish a 3 and 0, hopefully. 4 and 0, possibly, but that'll probably be too much fights. Yeah, 3 and 0, hopefully, anyways, before the end of the year. And then 2019, just keep the zero there. And keep winning fights and see what happens from there, really. I've actually been able to watch a few of your fights on YouTube. I I, I love your fighting style. You're, you're overall a very well-rounded fighter. For uh, future fans of yours, what should they expect from you? Uh, you know, what is your best attribute? My best attribute? I'd say it would be striking. But because the moment I hit someone with the left hand, they just try to shoot him for the takedown. But then my jiu-jitsu is good, like, it's not bad. So then they're surprised on the ground as well when I submit them or that. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm well rounded all over pretty much. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I've definitely seen that within your uh, fight so far. Uh, Matisse, yeah. tell me a little bit about where you train and um, pretty much during a fight camp. What does a typical day look like? I mostly train up in Ryushin, up in Dublin, and typical day. I just sometimes I train twice a day, but it'd be mostly once a day, depending. Well, I'm, when I'm in camp, it's flat out. I'd be train twice a day, but five times a week and take a Tuesday off and possibly one of the weekdays, one of the weekends off. Yeah, and I'd be on a diet and all gotcha. that stuff. So you're on a diet during fight camp, but obviously after a, you know, a, a fight, after an impressive win like you, how do you celebrate a win? Like, is there anything you can't do during a training camp that you like to do right after the uh, victory? Ah, uh, yeah, a few stuff now. Celebrate, really. Yeah. Well, any, any favorite foods? Ah, uh, foods, yeah. They're fast foods now, I like. <laughs> yeah. Pizza. Same. Oh, I love pizza. Yeah. The good yeah. stuff. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Now, on the day of a fight, right before your fight, how do you get yourself prepared, like, mentally? Do you have, like, a ritual that you do to get yourself, you know, in that right state, or are you just kind of calm and, you know, wanting and ready to fight? No, I'm more relaxed. It's kind of go with the flow. I don't really get too nervous or well I do get nervous but I don't get too nervous and I don't overthink it either I just go with the flow so just go in there really 
I don't overthink the whole moment. I just let it happen. Mm. So then I'm grand when I'm in there. You know, it, 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 it's kind of weird because whenever, I mean, obviously some fighters are calm, cool, and collected, ready to get that win, and then some get so nervous and get in their head, and it really, like, costs them the entire fight. It, it's, good, it's good that you're just relaxed. Yeah, that can happen now. I can see how that can happen as well. But no, it doesn't really happen with me. I have a strong mind, so it's good that it doesn't happen with me. But who are some of your uh, heroes within mixed martial arts? Now, this could be past or present, but, but who are some of the people you look up to and maybe even some of your fighters, uh, favorite fighters today? Some of my favorite fighters today. Um, McGregor. Yeah, he be one of them. He's the man, so he is. Yeah. And who, yeah. John Jones as well. I like him. I look up to him. I like his fighting style as well. Jones, he's very productive. And who else? Khabib. Yeah, everyone wants that. Yeah, he's a bear. <laughs> You know, it, it, it's actually kind of unfortunate uh, what's been going on with John Jones because he truly is one of the greatest fighters to, to ever step in the cage, but it's kind of uh, sad that he's kind of wasting it away. Yeah, it is actually look. Yeah. He does, yeah. What he does what he wants, I suppose. I guess. Well, I, <laughs> same with Conor McGregor. What were your thoughts on a McGregor versus uh, Mayweather in that boxing match? What were your thoughts on that fight? Uh, it, was a, it was a fantastic business deal. <laughs> Yeah, it was smart. It was, it was good. Like, he's rich. Yeah, that's it. Absolutely nothing wrong with that boxing match either. It's, mm. it's a good one. Do you think that we'll maybe see more crossover fighters, like some boxers coming over to MMA? Hopefully not, and some MMA fighters coming over to boxing. Yeah, oh, definitely would see that now. The money's good now. You're gonna see it without a doubt. But yeah, I, there will be in the future. There will be another one of them crossovers now. Either the boxers come into MMA or the MMA people go to the boxing. I certainly hope the boxer wouldn't be coming over uh, over to MMA because I can never get that James Tony versus Randy Couture fight out of my mind. Like that was the worst fight I've ever seen in my life. Oh yeah, I seen that one myself. Yeah, that was awful. That was awful. Matisse, <laughs> will I ever see you in the boxing ring? Is that is that maybe something of interest to you? Oh, oh you never know. I might might have a boxing match now. You never know. There could be a chance of that happening. Yeah. I mean, I suppose if the money's right, pretty much, you know, any fighter would probably do it. Yeah. I don't know. I wouldn't mind giving a boxing a go, having at least one or two in the bo in, like in a boxing match, see what's it like, see how much different it is. Yeah. Than me. I mean, I'm, I'm I obviously no coach, right? I really wouldn't know this too well, but I would assume that MMA fighters coming over to boxing would probably be much easier than, uh, than vice versa, because boxers, they're not used to those leg kicks. They're not used to being chopped down like that. Yeah. All, all them, all we have to do is just take them down, and that's pretty much end of the fight. Then just submit them. Right. Yeah. It's too high, high level on the ground for them, and they don't have enough time to learn all the stuff mm. in time. Well, yeah. it depends. They could be learning jitsu unknowingly, like you never know. Mm. I, I mean, certainly one boxer to do it that I really like is uh, well, obviously multiple. Holly Holm is someone who's crossed over, who, and she's done absolutely incredible for herself. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, she crossed over to MMA, yeah. Yeah, but, yeah, but she's I, knocking yeah. people out with the head kicks and all. Yeah, Ronda Rousey. <laughs> yeah, that one. Yeah. That was yeah. a good one. I enjoyed that for them. Same. Well, Matisse, the floor is yours. Uh, who would you like to thank? Coaches, family, anyone like that? And uh, how can people find you on social media? Yeah, I'd like to thank my coach, Coach Tony, who's getting me all these magnificent fights and helped me out. Uh, my parents, who are supportive. Um, looking out for me and stuff and then yeah you find me on Matisse Zaharov's MMA on Instagram and just normally just Matisse Zaharov's on Facebook 